All right, JHK here for Sports Kita, and join me right now is UFC lightweight Christos Yagos. Christos, thank you so much. Usually, we're speaking to you from California, but now you're all the way on the other side of the, the United States in Southern Florida. How's life treating you, man? Uh, life's treating me good. You know, um, me and my wife, we were able to buy a home out here because mm -hmm. it's a lot cheaper. And before my last fight. You know, her job offered her a chance to uh, come to Florida and represent for medical device sales. And at first, I was like, I'm not leaving Cali. There's no way I'm leaving Cali. That's my home. I wanted to stay. I've always wanted to stay. All my friends, my family. And then, like, I started looking at Florida a little more. And I'm like, I kind of like it. And then, like, she hits me with it. And at first, I said no. Then I thought about it. And I was like, hey, you want to go? Like, fuck it. Let's go. So, so, cause I knew I can train out here. The training's good. Yeah. So we decided, all right, we're just going to buy a house straight up when we go out there because we can afford it. And then I fought and got the bonus and that really helped me. So I'm thinking I'm going to move into like a condo out here yeah. and we were able to buy a nice size house. You wow. know what I mean? So, uh, thankfully for that last fight was good. And now, uh, I'm training at Sanford MMA. Yeah, man. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, have you ran into any like, crocodiles alligators i know in southern california they don't have those no 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 and i've heard a lot about them we haven't uh, ran into it yet i have seen some videos though yeah. of people running into uh, crocodiles so i kind of excited uh to, to to run into one it'd be a experience for sure you know so i have i've seen a couple of iguanas none in my backyard yet but i heard in the winter they start like falling out of trees there's so many of them you're actually allowed to kill them it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Well, you know, if you want to go see some alligators, you can go to the Everglades. It's not too far from Southern yeah. Florida. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I want to go. We're actually that, that, that that's a trip. Where me and my wife are planning. For sure, man. For sure. Now, like you said, you're you're at Sanford. How did you decide on Sanford? Because Southern Florida has so many high level gyms. It's not just the the three that most people talk about. There's other gyms there that are really high level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of a lot, and um, I just. I don't know, you know, my uh, my manager, I like Henry, Henry Hoof, and um, he uh, he was always respectful to me, even when I fought his guys, he always came up to me, he was very respectful, he, he, he said he was a fan of the way I fight, kind of got along, so I got a good vibe from him, and my, my manager, Jason, told me that, like, he likes him too, and he says they take care of the guys over there a little bit better, and um, I, I wanted like a team vibe, and, and it feels like a team vibe. And I'm really liking the training. Everyone's super cool, so just kind of fell, you know, for it. You know, I heard about ATT. I was going to go there originally, but I heard it's a bunch of different coaches, and I don't know. I was just like, I kind of like the vibe better at Sanford. Yeah, ahead of the last fight, you were telling me that you found a new gym, a gym that had a family environment, you know, in California. And, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, it yeah, worked yeah. out for you in the fight and everything. But then you move over here. I'm glad that to see that you got to another gym that has a similar vibe. Yeah, 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 for sure. So that's really good. Um, and the training partners are just fantastic. You know, it's like I'm used to being like the best guy in the gym usually, and um, or at least one of them. And then now I feel like I'm not even near the top. I mean, like maybe I am, but like I just feel like I'm getting pushed and every round is challenging i'm losing some i'm winning some i'm losing some so it's um it, it's way more of a push and i think it's just going to get me to that next level that i need to get to is is it a, a confidence builder for you to go into the gym every day knowing that sometimes you'll win and sometimes you lose because when you win all the time i don't know if your confidence really builds from that right it can but it mm. can be a false sense of confidence That's which isn't right. good either you That's know right. so um yeah definitely uh it made me like, I need to get on my shit because like, um, cause I, maybe I was a little more confident. Maybe I had a little bit of it. I was a little more confident than I should have been because like over here, I'm like, you know, there's guys that are catching me. There's guys that are, uh, you know, putting it, pushing me. And, um, you know, I got, I have my moments definitely. And it does, that feels good. And that gives me good confidence. You know, it's like confidence I earned and, but like, it's good. It's, and nobody's like, overly going too hard you know it's like good hard and uh it feels very safe and everyone's super cool so it's a good environment but i know every time i go in it's gonna be a push but i'm finally to the point where i can go every day because my body was 
a little wrecked in the beginning because I wasn't used to it. But yeah, I'm adapting. You know, what's unique about the situation is your last opponent, Sean Soriano, he's a staple at Sanford. So was there any hesitation there? Uh, no, you know what I mean? Um, like, I, I thought it was like, it might be a little awkward at first, but uh, he was super cool. I think Henry gave him a heads up because my manager hit up Henry and he gave him a heads up. So when he saw him, he was super cool. And now we talk all the time. He's like, we're super cool, good relationship. He makes the jokes about it. He's like, yeah, man, you know, like when you squeezed me, I was like, damn, you know, because he <laughs> talks about because he's a 45 or two. Yeah. So, but uh, he, he's cool. He's really yeah. cool, good vibes. And, um, I'm getting along with a lot of the guys. But, yes, in the beginning, I thought it was going to be – I was hoping it wasn't. I wasn't going to make it weird because, like, I fought Gilbert Burns. He beat me. I don't make it weird. So, just, you know, maybe because it was soon. Who knows? But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And and since being there, who have you worked with the most? Uh, probably Saul Rogers. Uh, he actually went – supposed to go to the finals in the Ultimate Fighter and had some visa issues coming back. And so that's why they chose Ryan Hall to go to the Ultimate Finale. And they didn't even give him a shot. I feel so bad, man. But he's fighting for Bellator now. He has a pretty good contract with Bellator. He's fighting the same day as me. So we're been, we've been working together a lot. And then Jared Flash Gordon, I've been working with him a lot. And then um, just getting different looks from other with, with other guys. You know, like this guy, Adam. I forget his last name, but he fights for Bellator. Good name. Bork. Um, huh? Bork. Adam Bork. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Adam Bork. And... Um, and then yeah, and then uh, uh Tofik, he's like the risen champ. Oh, he's over yeah. there right now. He's yeah, a beast. so I'm getting some. Um, yeah, he is. So I'm getting some work with him, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm just getting like everybody I go with is just like it's a push, you know. So, but it's good because I feel like I'm adapting fast. But yeah, I'm getting good work with a lot of high level guys, which is awesome. Yeah, you just mentioned so many different styles too. None of those guys are the same. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And they're all good grapplers too, yeah. so it's like I'm going, with, I'm going with some good guys. I go with strikers, mm -hmm. and you go with some guys who are up and coming as well. And so yeah, so it's really, really, really good vibe. Yeah, after your last fight, great performance. Now you got back-to-back -back wins. You asked for Donald Cerrone. Did they ever discuss that with you, the UFC? Nah, nah, nah. Maybe I'll ask it for it again when I get the mic going, you know? Because, uh, but this is good though, because like. I'm stoked. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted that fight, but it is what it is. My, the ultimate goal was to break the top 15, and this is my shot. I think I got a really tough top 15 opponent, but you know what? It, 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 it's like, whatever. I, I love fights, and I think this is going to be a fun scrap for sure. It's going to be a fun scrap. So uh, I think this is um, this is where I want to be, you know, top 15. Exactly, top 15 fighter. Were you kind of surprised that they came with you with this matchup, or were you just were you expecting it? Um, you know, I don't know. I get a little bit of mixed feelings. I think that I go in saying like, do I deserve this spot, or then I can go in to say, this is dope. You know, I had a great performance. They wanted to see if I can earn this spot. So I don't know whether it's just if it's too soon or. Is it? Am I ready to deserve it? Am I getting it because I deserve it? Who knows with the UFC sometimes? But uh, I did hear not nobody's taking this fight. Nobody wants to take this fight against him because of his fight style. I mean, he likes to wrestle. He's a good wrestler. So I heard a lot of guys turning him down. I'm not that guy. <laughs> you know, I'm Spartan. I've, I, I, I've fought Josh Emmett. Gilbert Burns, the champion, uh, the Charles Oliveira. I've been in there with, uh, with some of the best in the world already, so it is what it is, you know? I like to I like to challenge myself and show everybody what I'm made of. You know, Armin, he does have this hype around him, and like you said, some people don't want to fight him. What do you think of the noise surrounding him and, and his skill set? Um, I think he's a young, hungry fighter who's very good. But uh, and uh, but um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, I have a lot more experience. Um, I'm older. I feel like uh, I'm a little wiser. But um, I do think he's young, hungry, and he's gonna come. And um, I think he has a lot of hype because of what he's done and who he's gone against. Who he's beat. He, he cracked the top 15 pretty fast. So uh, in just what like four fights. So uh, yeah, um, we'll see. <laughs> You know, when you look at the, the stylistic matchup and, and how Armin fights, there's no doubt he's going to try to wrestle you. He's going to try to put you on your back. But then yourself, you're so good on the ground. 
And I feel like this fight, most people are going to look at it and say, okay, these guys are going to go to the ground and either Armin's going to try to grind them out and try to stay out of submissions or Christos is going to go in there and catch him in a transition and lock up the neck. Do you see it like that? Possibly, but um, he fought Davey Ramos. Davey Ramos was some of the best jiu-jitsu in the world, and he took Davey down, and he stayed pretty safe. So if I see the opportunity, I'm going to capitalize. Maybe he underestimates, underestimates my jiu-jitsu, and he won't be as aware. But um, I don't know. I, I, I see it more of him trying to take me down if I – if I get down in the transition, just try to get right back to my feet, try to stuff a couple, um, and just try to get up, you know, kick him away because I want to try to knock him out. You know, he, I think his ground works pretty good. If Davey couldn't submit him, I'm not saying I can't, but, you know, uh, I want I want to make this fight exciting. I want, I want to get up, and I want the crowd to be like, yes, he got up. Let's go, let's go. And then I come after his head, you know, and then he takes me down again. You hear, oh, and then, you know, I get back up and the crowd starts going off again. You know, I'm already planning all this in my head. It's crazy. You know, I just sit. So I think this would be a fun scrap. You know, I think he's he, he's great. I'm not going to say he's not going to take me down. I'm definitely working a lot on my takedown defense. I'm working a lot. I'm getting right back to my feet. I got some strong grapplers. So, yeah, you know, it's going to be a fun one. You know, in certain fights, you know, we, we go in there with this, like notion that it's going to play out a certain way so like if a wrestler goes in there and, and takes the guy down and the guy gets back up like twice or he stuffs the takedown then you know everybody gets into that moment like oh shit like what is he going to do now you know what i mean like he can't take him down and is that what you're explaining right now is that is that kind of like the feeling yeah yeah just like you know maybe he takes you down i get back up he tries to go again i can stuff it mm -hmm. And then it's like you start getting that confidence. Yeah. The crowd starts like rooting. <laughs> Obviously, the crowd always roots for the guy okay. that wants to do the damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they they, they want to see the the, the wrestler get mm -hmm. stuffed. But he does have a big hype around him. He might have a lot of fans too. But the only thing that sucks is I don't think we have fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit. You have a little bit in the apex. It'll be in my head. Yeah. <laughs> No, I, th I feel like they, I think they have like a couple hundred seats in the apex okay. right now. So you'll have okay, some cool, people cool. in there. So, yeah, you'll have a crowd. You'll, you'll have some that'll, people. That'll be good. Yeah, it is for sure. Perfect. Now, uh, Perfect. before I let you go, man, I just wanted to pick your brain on a couple of topics in the lightweight division since you're one of the guys coming up there. Your new teammate, Michael Chandler, he's going to be fighting Justin Gaethje soon. Is that the most exciting matchup at the top of the division right now, do you think, at the moment? Outside of Charles and Dustin, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, outside of the championship fights, for sure, I think that's the most exciting one. And on, then, uh, huh? On the violence level, like on the violence meter, do you think that's the most uh, exciting? Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. I mean, we'll see. That I think Justin's going to crack. Michael Chandler's going to crack. Yeah, it's going to be a violent fight. I think so. Have you worked with Michael since he's been there? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I got to work with him like twice, mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, cool guy, super cool guy, and um, yeah, yeah, he's just uh, he goes and comes back sometimes. So yeah, I just saw him today. He came back, so maybe I get some more work with him this week. Dustin Poirier, right? He's the guy that's kind of like dangling out there. We don't know what he's gonna do. It seems like he's not committing to the Charles Oliveira fight, and him and Connor are going back and forth. In his position, would you fight Oliveira? For the title, or would you wait for the big payday and fight Connor again, which many people consider the easier fight? Go get the go get the belt. Okay. <laughs> I I think you beat Charles. I don't actually. I wouldn't say that's more of an easy fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. But Char Charles is a beast for sure. But I don't know. I'm just a Connor fan, and I don't like what happened last fight. <laughs> Yeah, what did but you? I, what was your reaction to that? That the broken leg, man, was that? That's just, so it's shocking, just, right? It's, it's just a bummer that it happened, you know, because I wanted to see this Connor fight Dustin because I felt like the first fight, I mean the second fight, um, he was just too nice and he wasn't the Connor that everyone fell in love with, you know. And then maybe this time he tried a little too hard, but it was that Connor, so I wanted to see him in there, you know. And then that happened, so I'm like, ugh. That sucks. So I hope they do another one. I think it'll be the first time they do four, a number four, huh? Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> um, I don't know why he would wait. I think he'd just, just go get the belt. Win or lose, they're going to give him the fight. It's going to be a money fight no matter what. Yeah. Well, McGregor, he's also 
you know, sitting on his yacht and, and like tweeting and deleting. Have you been paying attention to that? You know, have you seen uh, what he's been writing? Yeah, little by little, they post it on uh, Instagram sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll catch, I'll catch you here and there. What do you think's behind all that? Do you think he's just trying to keep his name out there, or is he just bored and he just wants to keep people entertained? I think he's just trying to get re- uh, like relevant again. Um, he took a pause. Maybe a lot of people forgot. There's a lot of new names and a lot of new hype in the UFC now, which I think all stemmed from Connor. I think he did a lot of great things with the sport, but there's a lot more attention on a lot of other guys. And I think he's just trying to get that attention. Um, I think he made it super rich, and maybe he's getting bored, you know, and uh, wants to feel that uh, that way he felt when he had when he when he was on the up, you know. It's a feeling that everyone chases because it's such a great high and. You think he wants that again, maybe? Who knows? Just wants to feel important, feel relevant. So we'll see. I'm, I'm still a fan. I'm always going to watch. So, yeah. Yeah, I think everybody's going to watch. You know, people can hate yeah. him, but they're still going to watch. You know, I mean, that's what the sport is about. Now, for yourself, you know, Sanford MMA, you know, you bought a home, so you're going to be there. That's like your team. That's what you're going to ride with, and you're entering a top 15 fight. So by the end of, let's say, 2021, where do you see yourself? Top 15. Uh, after this fight, I, I'm probably going to take some time off just for the rest of the year. Got to focus on the house. Um, I was a little iffy about taking a fight, to be honest, because, like, I literally took it, and we were, like, just signing the contract for the house. So I had to deal with all the moving and stuff like that. But I, I made sure I got my training. So I just want to, like, focus on the house a little bit, get things settled, and then um, early next year, see, 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 see what happens, you know? If I crack the top 15, maybe keep climbing the ladder, or maybe somebody try to take my spot. doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to have a good career, you know? I'm not really somebody who, like, is chasing after the belt. If I come alongside where I get close, maybe I'll, 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 the decision will change, but I just want to have a nice, good career in the UFC, and that's all. Man, you're on your way to it, man, and your next step. Into the you know into the octagon is September 18th UFC Fight Night Las Vegas. Christos, it's always good catching up with you, man. Good luck on getting everything situated in Florida, and and I think it's it's a great move that you made, and uh, man, I can't wait to see like a, a altered version of you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a whole new Christos now because I'm telling you the training is a whole lot tougher. So yeah, thank you so much for having me on, man. I appreciate it.